Ladies and gentlemen, Psy presents Make Your Laws. So what does democracy look like? You might say that it's a government by the people and for the people. You might say that it's a belief that power belongs in the hands of not just the few, but the many. So what kind of government do we live in? Well, it might be loosely called a democracy, but the United States is actually a republic. Uh, we try to elect representatives who share our values, and once elected, they get to do basically whatever they want. So in the best case scenario, our representatives look out for the interests of just over 50% of the population, the ones who voted for them. More and more, though, our representatives are looking out for their funders, a few wealthy and influential people and companies who have far more sway than any of us. One solution is direct democracy, like in Greece. Every citizen votes on every issue. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to get a million people in a room together, and for that matter, not everyone has the time, interest, or expertise to follow everything. Um, Make Your Laws is a nonprofit project that aims to fix these problems. By taking advantage of modern technology and going online, we can fundamentally change the entire system of how laws are made, replacing our republic with a liquid democracy. Now, a liquid democracy is very much similar to a direct democracy. You could call it a fusion between direct democracy and the republic system. Um, in that every voter gets to vote on every issue if they want, but they can also proxy their vote to someone they trust, either generally or for some specific topic, and that person can in turn tr proxy it to other people. So suppose I don't follow politics much, but my friend Alice does. I trust her, and I know that she shares my values, and so I proxy my vote to her. She, in turn, might proxy it to the AMA for medical issues, ACLU for civil rights, NRA for gun laws. I can always override them, but we have a chain of trust. So you might be thinking, well, that sounds nice, but wouldn't we have to change the laws first? We both know that if we had to get politicians to let us participate, it'd never happen. Fortunately, we don't really need their permission. We have a couple strategies available to us. One is to democratize voter initiatives. We can make it possible for people to legally sign initiatives entirely online, avoiding the huge cost, about one to four dollars a head, for hiring people to go and collect signatures in person and making it possible for anyone with a good idea to get it on the ballot. The second is to work through elected politicians. Eventually, we'd want to have our politicians just do what we tell them to, fancy that, but even our current representatives do respond to a couple powerful carrots and sticks that we have at our disposal. Uh, of course, the biggest one is money. So suppose that you want your politician to vote yes on a particular bill. You can put a $10 down on it along with a thousand other people. If they vote the way you want, those $10,000 go to their re-election campaign. If they vote the other way, it goes to their opponent. How are they gonna vote? So I should pause here to change perspectives a little bit. The goals of Make Your Laws as a platform are a little bit different than those of our users because we need to make something that works for everyone. Even within just the state, there are lots of issues that not everyone quite agrees on and think about how that changes when we scale worldwide. One of the things we have to do as a platform is be completely nonpartisan. Whether our users want to pass a marriage equality bill or ban gay partners from receiving health benefits, we have to help them either way. It's important that our users trust us to be fair, no matter what their proposals are. However, while people are entitled to their own opinions, they're not entitled to their own facts. Part of our job is to ensure that the discussion is open and honest and that any empirical claims are fact-checked. We need neutral moderators who can stop trolls and help people find areas of compromise. Although we would allow 
pseudonymous users and companies to participate as proxies, like the ACLU, for instance, you can only vote in a particular jurisdiction if you're registered to vote there. This means that we need to accurately identify people, preserve their privacy, and still be able to prove that the vote counts are legitimate. Part of how we prove this is by making all of the code open source and making our own processes as transparent as possible. Any flaws in the system can be quickly found and fixed by a global audience rather than kept secret and exploited. The less you need to trust us, the more you can. So like any legislature, laws passed by the people need checks too. Minorities have to be protected from tyranny of the majority by making sure that certain rights, like freedom of speech, are written into our constitution. And it's the job of the courts to make sure we keep those fundamental promises. So what can we really do? In a few years, I'd like to think that we've passed our first new laws created entirely online by normal people. Maybe things like reforming the first past the post system or real changes in campaign finance, things that are in our interests but not our politicians. Looking further out, I'd like to see us having completely taken over our own governance. Cities, counties, states, countries all run according to the real long-term interests of their citizens and not just the interests of politicians and corporations. So if you'd like to join us in making this happen, just visit makeyourlaws.org or come talk to me afterwards. So what does democracy look like, like in the chant? I'd say it's simple, really. You make your laws. <laughs>